Hello and welcome to the second part of my multi-site search tutorial series. Um, in the last part I kind of got cut off a little bit at the end um, as we were coding out this function, just lost track of time. So, um, we did finish it in the end, we're just returning the URL. I'll just quickly go through this. So basically what this function is doing is um, it, you give it the site and the search term. It checks the search term to see if it's empty. If it is, it returns false. If it's not, it replaces all the spaces that you have put in your little box. So if you're searching PHP tutorials, it replaces that to PHP tutorials, like this, with a uh, little plus sign. So that is your search variable. Then it switches through the sites, all the site possibilities. So this was from what site you chose. And it takes the URL of a default search and puts on the search term where it would be. So if you were searching PHP tutor tutorials, that's what it would be. Um, if you were searching PHP tutorials on images, it would just go like that. And that is the search term if we copy and pasted it, um, which I'll, I'll do just for sake of example. So we'll paste that into there. And this will give us a Google image search for PHP tutorials. So we'll go back and, um, yeah. So we'll undo that, save that. And so I hope that makes sense. So if it's none of these sites, so that would be if someone tampers with your possible select options, it's going to return false. If it's empty, it will return false. Otherwise, it will return the URL that it is constructed in one of the cases. And that's the entire make URL function. The second function that we need is the display URL. Um, and now what this is going to do is check the different types that you can have submitted. So if you remember from the introduction, um, you can search on the site in a new window, so it provides you with the URL. It can be a new site or on their site in the current tab, just redirects you, or it can be in the site where you're using an iframe. And so, as you can see, the values are site, offsite, and insight, and that's what we're going to create right here. So, first things first is um, we need to check the type. So, we're going to say if type is equal to site will be the first one that we use. Um, we're going to have the display variable, sorry, is equal to, um, and then it's going to be a little sentence. If you remember, the sentence that we, in the introduction that I searched for, said the URL to your search to your search is colon and then it linked you to the search so in order to do this link um, it starts off with a regular anchor tag so a harif is equal to um, and then in here we want to put the URL and then we'll close the anchor tag the reason just a uh, side note here. Um, normally speaking, if you'd ever submit a string into a function, uh, you're going to have to protect it, right? You would have something like URL is equal to HTML entities URL. Um, however, we don't need that because on this same page, we've generated the URL with a protected um, search term. So the user actually doesn't have any input on the URL from here. If you wanted to, you can include this uh, URL is equal to HTML entities URL, although it's not going to make a difference. Um, but yeah, if, if there's you vary this so that of in between the time that they enter a search and that their search is displayed, there's any chance for them to um, edit the data, then that can be useful. So yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there for now, although it's really not going to make a difference in our example. So 
So the a ref is equal to the URL, and then if you remember, we want it to open in a new page because they're searching on the site, which is in a new window. Um, so the way you do that is by setting the attribute target, and the target is going to equal to underscore blank. And all that does is allows the anchor to open in a new window. And so that sets the anchor tag, and then the anchor text will be the link or the URL as well. Um, and so, yeah, there's if the type is equal to site. Then we're going to check um, an else if. So we're going to check else if type is equal to offsite. And if you remember, um, offsite was when it redirected you automatically. And so in this case, we're just going to return the URL as we're going to use the PHP header function, header location. And so we're just going to header to the location of this returned URL. Um, that should make more sense when we code out our index page. Um, then we're going to check else if type is equal to insight. I insight. And in here, we're going to have the display set again, except we're going to um, create the iframe that was shown in the first part. So we're going to have display is equal to. Um, and then it's an HTML tag of iframe, just iframe, no spaces or anything. And then it requires your source attribute, which is going to equal to the URL. Um, you can then provide it other attributes. So I'm going to give it a width is equal to 100%. Oops. Um, oops. That, that should be single quotes around that. And then, so we're going to have width is 100% and height is equal to 100%. Um, the width and height do not always work, so, and the um, frame two, sorry. The width and height don't work in all browsers, uh, height especially, and so you need to have a JavaScript workaround, but you can search for that on your own. It's not too complicated to find. Um, the fixes for it are all over the place and I'm just not including it because I don't really care to be completely honest I don't mind it being that short little box because if you're using a decent browser it will actually stretch the hundred percent not sure if Firefox does I'm quite certain Chrome does I would highly doubt Internet Explorer too because it's Internet Explorer anyways in between these two frame tags it's um, we're gonna include paragraph tags and just say your browser does not support iframes. And basically all this is going to do is if the iframe content cannot be included, it will display this message in the iframe opposed to the um, iframe itself. And then the user will be like, oh, well, that's why things aren't working. Um, so we're going to have a final else block here. and else it's going to return false. The only reason it would ever meet this um, condition is if the type um, was not one of these three that we specified and that would mean that the person was messing with our um, form and we don't like that so we're going to return false because they fail. Anyways, uh, then finally we're going to return our display. So. What this does, just to quickly um, go over this function one more time and then continue on, uh, it checks the type, if the type is the site, it provides this little message where um, you are given a link with the blank target, meaning it will open a new page. If it's off-site, it's just going to return the URL that they gave. If it is um, in-site, it makes this iframe with the source of URL and then 
otherwise it will return false. We're going to return the display. Um, so those are the two functions that we need and so this page is complete. I'm just going to refresh over here to check for uh, syntax errors and there are none. That's a good sign. Um, and I'm going to start on my index page now. I have a couple minutes left in this video. So we've already included the um, the init file. So the next thing that we need to do is define our errors array. Um, so we're, that's just going to equal to a blank array like this. And that just helps to prevent errors later on the page. And if anyone's looking through your code, they know that errors is meant to be an array. The next thing we're going to do is see if the form has been submitted. The way we do that is um, through the isSet function. We're going to say if is set, And then this just takes a comma separated list of all the things you're checking. Whoa. Keyboard language. Let's go back to proper English. Um, so we're checking our post site. That's the name of um, the site that we're submitting to. The post search. That's the search term. And dollar underscore post type. And that's the type of search. Um, and then we're going to open this block of code here. I'm actually going to end this tutorial now before I start on this index page just so that we can um, start fresh in the next part of the tutorial and hopefully finish up the entire index page in that tutorial before I get cut off again. So just to recap what we did in this video, we um, finished off this function or finished explaining this function, created this one which just makes how we're going to display the URL to the user. and. Um, included, set our errors array, and check to see if the form had been submitted. So thank you for watching this part, please join me in the next.